Okay troops, welcome back. It's been a while since I put a video up and there are basically two reasons for that. One is I've had a video removed by YouTube, my last one on colloidal silver. I did put in an appeal but it's decided to be removed so that's one reason. The other of course is the situation we're all in with this worldwide pandemic and as you can see the, I'm walking through the main road of my village the main road of my village that is the main road of my village oh we've got one car coming uh, we're all under lockdown so we can only go out for very specific purposes one of them is for essential supplies, another is for to, uh, work, essential work, work that can't be done at home and work that is essential. Another is for looking after a vulnerable person and another is exercise, we are allowed to exercise once a day so I'm fulfilling two purposes at the moment <clears throat> one is exercise and the other is I shall be picking up some essential supplies both while I'm out exercising and on the way back Jess stay So even while we're out, we have to keep our distance from other people, people that are not in our family, or not even family, but in the home. So if I see somebody on this path here, I'm going to have to get out the way as far as I can, or one of us is, while the other goes round. And unfortunately, in this country and many other countries, things are going to get worse before they get better. So we do all have to do our bit to stop the spread of this virus because it is beginning to overwhelm health systems in a lot of countries. There is some hope. Um, in South Korea, the epidemic, the spread of the epidemic is, is slowing due to their um, containment measures. And I think the same is true in China, where the rate of infection has almost ceased. Anyway, we do what we can for the system as a whole and we must do what we can for ourselves as well and I'll go into a little more detail of what I'm doing to minimize the effects of the infection on me personally when I got my stores and get back right I'll get back to you a bit later on not out for too long and in fact it is you can't see it because there's a strong wind and it's blowing very fast but it's not snow, it's like little hailstones it is uh, fairly cold here in the UK at the moment I say fairly cold, it's about zero that's uh, it's not, not really cold is it but when it's, when it's a damp cold it's actually warmer than a than a really cold cold because uh, you've got the moisture sucking your heat away if you, get, if you get what I mean, I'm out in it quite regularly, so I, uh, the worst thing I, I, I find is sleet, where it just sticks to you and sucks your heat away. If you get dry snow, then that's not, not quite so bad. But uh, obviously the wind also makes a big, um, 
it's a big factor in sucking away your heat right anyway I'll get back oh well we might as well start here uh, this is uh, not one of my shop supplies but this is one supply I am getting this morning uh, I'll be having this for my dinner so that's nettles a, 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 quite a staple really in uh, hard times not that I'm saying we have hard times food wise or anything we don't there is reasonable food stores in the shops although some shelves are empty and there are uh, some things which we have difficulty getting especially if you don't want to be going traipsing around among people too much because uh, hang on a sec okay it really is uh, sort of snowing half snowing half hailstoning now but uh, you don't want to be going traipsing around the shops because in this country the use of face masks is not encouraged in fact rather the opposite it's discouraged and I think that's because there is a worldwide shortage of face masks and uh, any personal protection equipment has to first go to the frontline services the medical teams and even they are short of equipment so we're not encouraged in fact we're discouraged and you couldn't find any even if you wanted some uh, face masks so I'll just pick some of these uh, nettles and then we'll move on because it's not good sitting here in the hailstones you can just see them bouncing off my jacket I think she's got to go in the water if there's any water she has to be in it and it's no good telling her otherwise anyway the uh, next important resource we want is just some of this straw in a bag it's not all dry but never mind I'll just get some of this in a bag just for to put on the garden just to stop the young shoots from getting frost damage which uh, I always put my plants in a little bit early uh, I'm always allowing for global warming but I still always get caught out a little bit and the, uh, the shoots get nipped off it doesn't kill them but it does retard them so I just put a bit of straw over them just to uh, keep them coming up through the straw and that gives them a bit of protection so I might get some potatoes a bit earlier than I would otherwise get them in fact I can get two or even sometimes three crops right so we just get on with that we can't hang about too much we can't uh, we've got to take this uh, being battened down indoors we've got to take it seriously though indoors does include your garden um, so we've got to be thankful for that you can see in this field I don't know whether you can see the bales of straw still out and it's the end of March now very end of March still bales of straw and that's because all this land has been sold for housing development um, so it'll have been sold way before the crop was even harvested in fact I didn't think the crop was even going to get harvested they left it or somebody left it so late before they decided they'd pull it out but uh, with all the torrential rain we've had in the autumn they never got the never got the straw in or they got some of it in but not all of it there's about four or five fields and they got about two fields in got this field in here this field's been straw's been taken off that one what's he doing right well I've got my bag of supplies so it's off in a homeward direction and we'll stop on the stop at the shop on the way back see if they've got any flour in yet so we're a little bit uh, we do a bit of baking we're a little bit short of flour right
Right, given the conditions, this road, which is the village bypass, is actually a little bit busier than I thought it would be. Though it is usually very busy. See how long it takes before there's a car. I can hear one now, road noise. Here we go, oh it's a van. Fortunate, unfortunately, look at the litter. People just chuck it out the cars. Hey, heel. The rat bag. Good dog. <laughs> well, you can't see that too well, I know. But the first thing to do when you get in, besides taking your boots and your coat and your hat and your gloves and leaving them in a dirty place, is to wash your hands. And uh, what we're using is the good old pink carbolic soap. We haven't got, I, I shouldn't really touch the tap, should I? But, uh, plug in. I'm probably not doing it right. To see how to wash your hands properly, you should go to um, the Dr. John Campbell's site. But uh, you get in between all the little uh, weddy bits, you know, right in all the creases. And I don't have my, probably can't hear because of tap water running, but uh, I. I don't have my nails cut too short because I, I find my nails handy for doing stuff. Uh, so get the scrubbing brush in there. <laughs> There's nothing like the smell of carbolic soap. Right, so you're supposed to sing some songs and that gives you the right time, but. You'll know if you've gone, you know, if you've gone over everything. And then of course, of course I've touched the tap, so we'll just give that. Then we've got dog hairs all over the place. And then, uh, because we're washing our hands so regularly, they get very dry. So, uh, I'm quite fortunate, uh, while I was at work a couple of weeks ago actually, uh, a lady gave me a tube of hand cream. So. <coughs> and stick to your own towels as well, as well as your own flannels. Will you come off there? Come off there. Get a wrap bag. Oh. <laughs> you wrap bag. Wasn't your fault, that was my fault. That's a, that's a valuable resource down the down the spout. That's uh, that's me water. I have to go and get I have to go and get some more water. Come out the way. Right. Well, my dinner's been a catalogue of disasters so far. 
I was going to start the fire with the lighter, but there's no there's no gas in it. Well, it, it's a bit windy, so obviously it will probably get blown out. But if you can see, there is no gas in it. So I thought, no problem, I'll show you a hack. You can take something like a deodorant or anything that uses something like propane as the propellant. And although you get a bit of gas all over the place, so you've got to do this outdoors, you can press it up against the fill valve and shove it on and get some gas into your lighter. There's no fill valve on the bottom of it. So I can't even show you that. So what I thought I'd do is I went into the house and I dug about a bit and I found some char cloth that uh, Mad Dog Survival sent me a while ago. So we're going to have to rely on that. But I, when we use this method we need a tinder bundle. I ain't got a tinder bundle. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I have got something uh, I can get a light which is uh, a bit like... Um, it's a bit like punk wood. If we can get that going, we'll be laughing. So I've got no light, but we do have sparks because it has got a flint in. So I'm just going to use the sparks from the lighter. And this is his um, like Hessian stuff. So a big surface area. Uh, I don't want to stint myself though because uh, when you try and use just little bits, you try and conserve what you've got you end up using twice as much so I broke it in half you leave that there and uh, we're going to get this going with just a lighter which at the end of the day is a ferrocerium rod and a and a striker so I'm expecting this to go for the, the first first attempt yeah well maybe it's a wee bit windy it is a bit windy actually Well, like I say, it's a catalogue of disasters. I think the sparks are going out before they even get there. It's just so windy. Hey Lee. It's like with the ferrocerium rod though, isn't it? Uh, some people will show you getting a fire started in the first first strike, but it very rarely goes like that in real life. Okay, before we give up, I'm just going to uh, take the take this frame off. To get better exposure. There we go. Oh, the bit that was a light blew away. <laughs> so I've taken the uh, guard off the lighter. Okay, so that's going to go now, but uh, if you're going to use your lighter as a striker for char cloth or tinder, take the frame off. So that's my tip there, that's the lesson we've learnt. So I'll just get this going and then I can get on with my dinner. Right, it's perhaps not too much of a good idea to be getting inhaling too much smoke when we've got this um, SARS type virus, coronavirus going around because that's going to put your um, put your lungs under that little bit more stress and uh, it's not the sort of thing you want. 
in this climate. Right, so I'm going to get the rocket stove going for the last, probably the last time as well. Right, so both fires are going now. Uh, this has done quite well. This, I mean, this this thing's on its last legs now. Uh, but this is the third big burn this thing's done. So there's not going to be much left of it after today. And it burns very clean as well. Burns just like a charcoal stove would burn. So, we'll get down to the dinner then. I've got some uh, bits of pumpkin here. that we, We've had this pumpkin since uh, in one whole piece uh, since October. Just a small one and that, this is what's left of it. I've got an, an onion here. Then I've got some rice, which has been uh, boiled. I've got some horse hoof fungus here which I'm going to use for my tea. Uh, <laughs> the birds have been pooing on the, ch on the chopping block, that's not very hygienic is it? Now, this video is essentially about, uh, you know, sort of bushcraft under this virus event. Um, so I've been out today and I've got my nettles and I'm going to put my nettles in in a minute. But one thing you should keep in mind, do not have an accident or an injury serious enough to warrant going to hospital, not at this stage. Uh, because they're overwhelmed as it is so if you are practicing bushcraft in your backyard 
just be very very careful uh, they're under tremendous stress at the moment we we don't want to add to it yeah what have I done with my spatula now I'm, I'm not very organized here because I wanted to put a video out because it's been such a long time since I have uh, for the two reasons I previously explained so I'll just go and get the nettles but it, it is important to try and have some some degree of normality uh, because that will make it a lot easier when this virus does ease off and our restrictions are relaxed although I do feel that they're going to get tightened before they get relaxed so I should have chopped these up a bit finer because unless I get them thoroughly cooked I am risking getting myself stung with them. So, <clears throat> what I'm thinking about to get me through this uh, <coughs> this episode is is staying as healthy as possible, which means not having an accident here. Uh, but it also means getting enough sleep. It also means eating healthily and regularly, and having a regular routine which me and the dog manage because I get her out first thing on the morning and we're allowed to do that as long as we keep at least two metres separation from anybody who would come across hey do you mind you're a liability get down And I also, uh, I'm following Dr. John Campbell's advice and I'm taking vitamin C, well, supplementing a little bit vitamin C with the, the fruit that I eat. And I'm also taking vitamin D as a supplement because we're designed to make vitamin D, which we need from the sun. But certainly in the winter, we don't get much sun in the UK. So. I'm following his advice on that one. Uh, meticulous cleanliness, especially when we come in. I've got different shoes on now. Uh, my boots that I walk about with outside, they'll stay in a dirty area. And washing hands when I get in and frequently, but also as well, um, rehydrating your hands with hand cream because they start getting very dry after a while. All right, that'll do. Keep down. Right, that's almost ready. So I'm just going to go and get some honey for the horse hoof tea and I might get some pepper and a little bit of salt for the 
for the breakfast, her for the dinner. Right, well, just as everything uh, is ready, so it starts raining or hailstoning, so let's put a little bit of salt on, not too much salt. We don't need too much salt. We don't want high blood pressure at this time of year. And we keep our salt in the pepper pot and our pepper in the salt pot because it, it comes out better. I could put um, the little military rations of Tabasco sauce on, but uh, I'll save that. Oh, that's my spatula. <laughs> my spatula's got off. Right, we'll take that off there. Some of it's stuck to the bottom, but that's all right. Right, that hasn't quite browned up yet. The um, horsehoof tea, but we're going to go with it. I'm going to put honey in it because it will be quite bitter. Just look at this. The heat from that is tremendous. It's a very efficient way of cooking. I'll probably get one more burn from that if I put it out now. Probably get one more burn. Yes? I think the dog's not daft, I think the dog's gone in. I'll be going in myself in a minute. With the onions and the nettles and the pumpkin and the rice for a very nutritious dinner.
So, under these conditions, we can't get out as much as we would like. Well, that doesn't stop me doing things from in the back garden, but there's been a lot of work on because I'm taking me gardening a lot more seriously um, this year because this thing's going to drag on for a long time yet so I wish you all well stay safe and if you want to know more about the, the virus itself and how you can protect yourself from the virus look up Dr John Campbell on YouTube fantastic site so I might catch you in a week, it might be a little bit more, but I will be back on, unless uh, YouTube chooses to knock this one off like they did me colloidal silver one. I don't think they will. I'm sure they've got the reasons. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I've got a couple of new subscribers, even though I haven't put any new videos up recently, so I welcome you, and uh, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in a week or maybe it's a bit longer. So the first thing to do when you get in apart from trying not to drop your phone in the toilet <laughs>